Good evening, everyone. A well welcome to the session on mass, uh, smart investing do's and don'ts of investing in bonds, which is being done in association with Bonds India. Recently, I believe you are all aware that SEBI has announced many new changes in the corporate bonds market, like uh, request for cloud platform for trade execution and settlement of trades in listed non-convertible securities, securities, debt instruments, municipal debt securities, and commercial papers have been introduced. This will enhance the transparency in the execution of the trades through exchanges RFQ platform. Another major change which has happened is the reduction in the denomination for debt securities and non-convertible redeemable preference shares, where the face value of each debt security or non-convertible redeemable preference share issued on private placement basis shall be rupees 1 lakh only. And also one of the changes is that standardization of rating scales used by credit rating agencies. So with all these new changes, uh, it will help to attract new investors in the corporate bond market and help in the diversification of the corporate bond market. So to help you understand this new changes in the bond market in India, we have today Bonds India team who will explain you the various bonds available in India and what factors you need to look at while investing in bonds. Bonds India is an e-business platform for fixed income securities that uses technology as a means to provide functional solutions to users. I personally believe after this session, you your understanding on the corporate bonds market will be much better and you will be able to take more uh, informed decisions in investing and allocating some of your funds in the corporate bonds. So now I request uh, Ms. Ishita Bharadwaj and Shaili Ved from Bonds India to take the session forward. Thank you, sir, for the introduction. A very good evening and a warm welcome to all the attendees. Thanks, NSC, for giving us this platform to educate and impart knowledge. It's a privilege to discuss the contours of the bond market. Uh, let me give you a brief introduction about our organization. Uh, Bonds India is a new age fintech startup that aims to digitize the Indian bond markets. It is country's first online fixed income portal where primary focus remains to simplify the bond markets for retail investors alongside educating and advising them at each and every step. We focus on the fixed income side of the portfolio with an all-inclusive, trustworthy digital platform with a reasonable and an objective guidance. Our ultimate goal here is to ensure complete transparency for investors and we have high-tech integration to provide real-time online trade settlement facility. Let me give you a quick introduction about myself. I'm Shelly Wei and I handle the trade desk at Bonds India. Uh, I have close to 10 years of experience in equities and debt market. Uh, today, I'm joined by my colleague, Ishita Bhardwaj. She handles the private wealth segment. Um, Ishita has around four years of experience in financial markets. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, moving on, uh, through this brief webinar, we intend to discuss the concept of smart investing in the bonds market. Uh, and the aspects to be taken care of while investing in bonds. Uh, we will take you today through the do's and don'ts of bonds investing. Uh, we may, uh, intend to make this session a bit more interactive. Uh, so we would be part, uh, we would be conducting polls where the audience can participate in it in the middle of, in between a few slides. And we have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Before moving on, I think let's have a quick poll at the very beginning. Let's gauge the percentage of our audience having who have invested in bonds before. So I think Ankita will help us with the poll. Uh, we'll give around 30 seconds to submit your response. Uh, the first question which uh, we would go live for our poll is, do you have some part of your portfolio allocated to bonds? Yes or no?
so around uh, 57 percent say yes to this question which is on the higher side so we're happy to know that a lot of our participants have invest invested in bonds before and we are hopeful that we'll be able to guide you better and enhance your investment journey in bonds uh, let's discuss the concept of a bond to begin with or let us just in a just one second. Let us understand what exactly is a bond. So uh, bonds are investment securities issued by a government or a company. The securities are issued at a set period of time and in exchange for regular interest payments made to the investor of the instrument. Now, uh, the few characteristics or features of the bonds include coupon rate. Uh, most of the bonds have fixed coupon rate, regular interest payments, the bonds have regular interest payments, uh, depending upon the bond, uh, the coupon rate you select. Uh, interest payments are monthly payments, quarterly, semi-annually, annually. Uh, bonds have a specified maturity date. So uh, maturity date is basically a fixed date when the bond matures. Uh, the bonds get redeemed at maturity and repayment of the principal amount. So wherein uh, at maturity, the principal amount is uh, repaid along with the remaining interest payments. Uh, let's discuss some of the common terms. Uh, most of us present here would probably have heard these terms related to the bonds. So these are the common terminologies of the bond. Uh, issuer. Issuer is uh, basically the company or the government agency who issues the instrument. Maturity is again when the uh, bond gets, when every bond gets uh, redeemed at maturity. Maturity can be, the bonds can be of short term maturity, medium term or long term. They all have different maturities. A callable bond is where an issuer has an option to repay the bond before the scheduled maturity. The issuer can call for the bond before the maturity date. Coupon uh, is the coupon rate is basically the interest rate which is payable on the bond. Price, uh, price are, is uh, the prices at which you would purchase the bond. So you can purchase the bond at par, premium, or at discount. Uh, yield is the overall returns which you earn on the bond. And credit rating is basically the assessment of the, of the credit worthiness of the issuer of the bond. Mm -hmm. uh, Ishida, can you help us further understanding why one needs to invest in bonds? Yeah, I think thank you so much for explaining the basic terminologies related to bonds. Now let's look at some of the benefits that people can have when they invest in bonds. One of the most common benefit of investing in bonds is diversification. I think we've all heard that famous saying that of not putting all your eggs into one single basket. So to have a balanced portfolio, bonds have proven to be a good investment product. Secondly, one more uh, one more good reason to invest in bonds is the mm -hmm. is that bonds provide a sense of stability in terms of returns. Uh, as Shelly mentioned, bonds have a fixed mm -hmm. and predefined income stream. Um, interest payments are at, at regular intervals. So the volatility risk overall is low in, in the bond investment. Uh, liquidity also, there is a common perception that bonds are not very liquid as an asset class. Uh, bonds are tradable securities in the market. Uh, investments made can be redeemed in part or as a whole at any point of time. For example, if someone wants to buy today and sell after a month due to some emergency or some uh, idea that they have in their mind, uh, it is very much possible in the secondary market, considering how liquid the bond is. Uh, speaking of returns, bonds help preserve capital and also generate positive returns, especially during uncertain market situations. There is also a capital appreciation gain that can be taken advantage of. And lastly, when we talk about tax benefits, we have many tax-free bonds available in the market. There are a lot of uh, structured products as well, like MLDs, that people can choose for tax benefits per se. Moving on, we will have a quick look at the Indian debt market. So the global bond market is about $119 trillion, out of which India stands at $2 trillion. So India being a rapidly growing economy, there is a lot of scope for the country's debt market to develop further. 
the issuer uh, in the bond market can be a government or a company like sherry said uh, they might need money to fund a new project or run ongoing operations uh, when we talk about uh, the types of bonds that are there uh, there are securities like government securities state development loans which are the safest then we have state guaranteed bonds corporate bonds structured products and so on as we can also see in the illustration the major participation in the bond market is by institutional investors banks mutual funds and some corporates detailed particip participation in the market is still negligible in the indian market moving on to the next slide having discussed all this i think we can have another poll at this point of time ankita can you take us through the next poll, poll question please Sure. This is a technical issue. This one. Uh, so we'll take you to the do's of investing in bonds. Yeah. So before you start investing, you must understand the bonds and the bond market. So for that, you need to ask yourself some certain questions. Certain basic questions to ask would be, uh, what is the process to make an investment in bond market? How do you choose a bond? So uh, investments are done through SEBI registered brokers. How do you choose a bond? Uh, you need to ask yourself if whether you want to make an investment for a short term, for a long term horizon. what are your investment goals what is your risk appetite and what are the funds at your disposal disposal so uh, we'll be covering all of these in detail in subsequent slides um we need to educate yourself uh, about the bonds through uh, newspapers podcasts books newsletters webinars and the most important of all is uh, you need to have an authentic web content don't uh, go online and uh, believe in anything and everything that you watch uh, understand the authentic web con content go through the circulars of sebi rbi nsc and bse um, so as we know gaining understanding is a never ending process keep on acquiring more and more knowledge and make educated investments um so uh, before uh, investing in bonds most important thing is to set up an investment goal so when you want to start investing in bonds you have to understand uh, what kind of specific goal do you have uh, ankita can we take a short poll you have to understand the short term mid medium term or the long term uh, time horizon that people can have yeah. for bond investments so we can have the next poll question uh what would you want to start where uh, would you want to start investing in bonds to meet any specific goal uh, whether it is short term medium term long term or a combination of all
turn this down. Turn the presentation. Sorry, we have some technical issue here. We'll just take uh, 10 seconds more. Look at the poll. Yeah. So let's have a look at the poll results. So around forty-four percent uh, attendees over here uh, prefer uh, midterm investments. So for midterm, uh, we are taking three to five years or six years at the moment. Okay, so uh, once you educated yourself, once you gathered all the necessary information around the bonds, it is uh, very important to spell out your investment goals. So everybody has a different investment goal. Everybody has a different requirement for his or her family and for themselves. Uh, so uh, a young guy who has just recently joined the corporate world would probably uh, have a goal to buy a car in the next couple of years. Um, couple planning to get married would probably have an investment goal to purchase a property after three to four years. Uh, parents would seek an investment goal uh, with the viewpoint of uh, their sponsoring the children's future education. Uh, somebody would have an investment goal to go on a holiday, on an international holiday, on a vacation. Uh, people would be planning for their retirement journey. So everybody would have different investment goals. Uh, now, how does investment goal help us? So basically, Investments, uh, setting up a goal will make you more disciplined. It will induce compulsory savings. Uh, you will have a short term and a long term planning at hand. And uh, you will have some planned expenses and investments. Uh, now, how do you set an investment goal for yourself? So again, you need to ask, there are certain factors which would decide how do you set an investment goal for yourself? So age, that would be, uh, de it depends upon your age, your current capital standing, the risk appetite, how much risk are you planning to take? What are your current needs? What are your future needs? So uh, depending upon most of these factors over here, you need to set an investment goal. Uh, and, and always ensure that the goal that you set is realistic. Do not ever set any unrealistic goals which would not be met. So uh, use a smart method to set smart investment goals. Now, uh, just to elaborate smart, it's being specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. So specific means make each and every goal that you set very clear and specific. Specify your requirements. Uh, what are you looking for exactly? Uh, measurable. Measurable means um, every, each and every goal has a set time frame. So you need to uh, understand that when do you plan to achieve your goal, whether you plan to achieve it in a short term, mid term, long term, on basis of the, your time frame, you need to set your goal. Uh, this will help you to invest in uh, short term, long term papers, long term bonds, whichever uh, as, uh, goes as per your goal. Achievable, you need to make a very practical action to achieve a goal. Uh, for this, you need to be self-disciplined. Uh, relevant, determine whether your goals relate to your real life or they are and they are realistic. Goals should never be set, no, never set unrealistic goals. Uh, time based, assign a time frame to each and every goal so that you can track uh, progress. Your investment goals must be, must not be unrealistic. Uh, by taking care of all these requirements, you set an investment goal. And uh, you have to, uh, according to that, it will help you. How, to, how do you plan to make your investments? Uh, next slide. Moving on. I think this is a very important slide, Shelly. Become, before becoming a bondholder, what are the uh, aspects we should look at in the uh, issue? Just one second. 
Mission Chinese. Mission Chinese. I think we're facing some more is, yeah. technical issues here. Let's, I think we, let's start with this. Okay, so, uh, so once you've done your homework, once you understand and you gain understanding uh, of the bonds, the investment goals that you set, educated yourself in, enough, what do we do? It's extremely important that you know the issue of the bond. Uh, where you want to invest, where do you want to make your invest, it's very important that you have a background and you have a thorough knowledge about the issue of the bond. So some of the key steps to do that is stability, issuer's credibility, the industry environment, and the track record. So when we say stability, we need to figure out if the company is sound enough to be, uh, and is it likely to be around for the term of your bond, you need to look at the financials of the company. Issuer's credibility. So does the company have good credit worthiness? Does it meet its liability payments on time? Industry environment. So over here, you need to have a, basically you need to know the business environment uh, for the company. Like which industry is the company in? Is it operating in uh, pharma, banking, automobiles, infrastructure, etc.? Uh, now, the track record, when you say that you need to ensure and check if the company has previously issued bonds and have made all the payments on time. Also, the capital structure is very important. Now, to understand, the, this is to understand the priority in repayment in relation to the other creditors. Like, what is the company's debt to equity ratio? How much debt the company has taken against its own equity? What is the debt service coverage ratio? So basically, does the company has the income to repay its loans? Uh, next. Slide chain. I think that's a. I think that's a very fair point. All the points about the issuer are relevant that we need to check before we make investments in bonds. Yeah. Moving on to, I think, the risk profile, Sherry will take us through that. Yeah. So basically, uh, it's very important to create your own risk profile. So first question is, you need to ask yourself is that why do you need to invest in bonds? And when you ask this to yourself, the next question that will come to your mind is, uh, you want to invest and then what is the amount of risk that you're willing to take? Now, based on your risk appetite, your goals, you will choose a particular bond that will suit your needs. Uh, based on the investor's ability to take the risks, we have noted uh, some of the three main criteria: uh, conservative, moderate, and aggressive. Now, uh, in any investor who uh, is ready, who wants to go in for safe uh, returns, can, uh, is a conservative investor who will go for minimum risk and safe returns. So they can go ahead and invest in sovereign gold bonds, uh, government securities, triple A rated bonds, secured bonds. Now, other investors would want to have some little higher risk, a moderate level of risk. So in exchange of the potential risk over the medium to long term, um, for, uh, they can invest in the secured bonds and secured bonds, not guaranteed bonds. They can also go in for double uh, A bonds, A plus bonds. Uh, and certain investors would uh, be very aggressive with their investments where they look uh, over for maximizing their returns. So basically higher the risk, higher the return. So if you, if you maximize, um, need to maximize the potential returns, you need to be aware of all the risks associated with the investment. And uh, for that, uh, the, uh, the bonds um, will be triple B, B plus till up to C. So these are basically the high yielding bonds. This is a very nice segmentation of investors that we trust. So basically, these are the credit rating. Uh, so credit rating is a very important assessment of the credit worthiness of the issuer. Uh, now, some of the regist SEBI registered rating agencies are Crystal, ICRA, CARE, India Ratings, etc. Uh, so as we can see here, uh, you can go from the, the highest the degree of safety is AAA. So the highest safety, the lowest 
credit risk. Uh, so uh, from AAA, while C is the lowest rating category. So ratings between AAA and BBB are the investment grade ratings, while the ratings of BBB and below are considered to be speculative grade ratings. Uh, so people, uh, as we have understood here, you if you want to go in for uh, higher returns, you need to uh, take maximum risk, higher the returns, higher the risk, and uh, if you want to go in for the most safe and secured bonds, the uh, the returns would be on a little lower side. Uh, Ankita, uh, can we conduct a poll here? So basically we can just have an understanding if uh, our attendees have understood the uh, credit rate, the ratings of the credit agencies. So we can have a poll uh, for a risk averse investor who wants his investments to be completely safe. Which credit rating would he or she prefer? Double A, triple B or triple A? I think we'll give 10 more seconds. So most of the people have chosen AAA or AA rated. So we're very happy to know that our investors, our audience are understanding what we're trying to say. Let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, so always straight. This is a very important point to remember. Always straight with the uh, market registered participants. Yes, Always uh, trade with market registrant uh, participants, and uh, that is going to ensure the highest amount of safety. It's going to be trustworthy, and your uh, capital is going to be uh, protected. So, safety when we say safety of investment is SEBI would perform extensive due dil diligence before registration, trustworthy as they pass the fit and proper criteria of SEBI and protection, uh, protection of investment as they regularly report all their operations to SEBI. So uh, tra always trade with market registered participants to ensure the highest am amount of safety. Uh, can we have the next slide? Yeah. Always choose your settlement through exchange. Uh, why would you always choose a settlement to exchange? Uh, basically, it's very simple because uh, the process is going to be very quick. The process will be extremely transparent. Uh, there is a less risk of uh, there is a there's no counterparty there's risk a, involved there. Yeah, there is no counterparty risk involved there, and there is fairness and order among buyers and sellers. So basically, the entire process will be very smooth if you choose settlement. Uh, if you choose a settlement through exchange. Can we have the next slide?
Yeah, so if uh, somebody who has never invested in bonds, it is very easy to feel overwhelmed by the information you might receive on the internet or you hear from the people around you. Uh, like every other person, you know, maybe telling you do this, do that, ask this. So they would probably just confuse you. So it's very important that you do your own research. You go at your own pace. Uh, and uh, the most important thing is you can always take the help of your relationship manager. Uh, learn by doing instead of delaying. So do not delay investments. Once you start investing, uh, you will understand uh, that how smooth it is investing in bonds. And the best part is uh, that you can invest as low as rupees thousand. So you can start investing with a bond of thousand rupees face value. Uh, always uh, start investing in a uh, higher rated bonds. Uh, so that will assure your maximum amount of safety. Uh, go for short duration bonds um, and become a part of the market. This is very important. Uh, become a part of the market by diversifying your portfolio. Uh, don't uh, just invest all, just don't put all your bonds into uh, one category. Diversify your portfolio. Uh, so basically, rationalize your returns with managing your portfolio. As we can see in the chart, uh, higher the risk, higher the returns. So basically, if you're going for the AAA rated bonds, government bonds, the, uh, you'd have minimum returns or, the, or returns on a little lower side. Uh, then as you see, if you're investing in uh, corporate bonds, which are investment grade bonds, speculative grade bonds, which are the most high yielding bonds, you'll have higher returns. Uh, previous slide, these are, yeah. Okay, next slide. So uh, diversify your portfolio. So this is basically uh, investment mantra is rationalize your returns with managing your portfolio. Always remember, uh, diversify your portfolio. You can invest into uh, different kinds of bonds. Uh, GSEC bonds, state development loans, tax-free bonds, there are high-yielding bonds, there are st state guaranteed bonds, there are bank bonds, PSUs, unlisted bonds, perpetual bonds, there are some structured products like MLDs, sovereign gold bonds. So uh, diversify your portfolio, invest in uh, all different types of bonds depending upon your investment goals and your risk appetite. Yeah, so understanding the market scenario while you're investing in bonds is extremely important as this will help you to understand the movement of different markets. So accordingly, uh, you can tweak your investment strategy to keep on making returns through bonds. Uh, having said this, uh, assuming that if the investor would hold the bond till maturity, uh, then frequent follow-up and tracking of the market is not needed. Uh, I think we'll conduct yeah. a poll now. Gita, we'll conduct a poll over here. What are the possible apprehensions you have about investments in the bond market? A, low returns. B, lack of understanding or lack of professional help. C, unaware of the investment process. And D, a combination of all.
So most of the people have chosen combination of all. I hope we are able to help you in some way uh, if there's a lack of understanding of bond market. So I guess uh, we've covered up uh, most of the do's of investing in bonds market. Ishita, would you like to add anything over here? I think we covered everything. Let's move on to the don'ts because we are also running a little short on time. So first and the foremost don't that we want to cover is that like as we have seen in the slides, it is very important to diversify one's portfolio. Depending on only one product, whether it's a high yielding bond or a AAA rated bond, putting all your money in one type of security can increase one's risk exposure. So it is always better to avoid risks associated with illiquidity, for example, and uh, or the possibility of the issuer not being able to meet its financial obligations on time. So it's always better to diversify your portfolio, even if it's fixed income portfolio, how to diversify that portfolio. When we talk about risk, like Shelly also covered in the previous slides, every individual has a different risk tolerance. Some people can take more risk than others. It is very crucial to understand a suitable amount of risk. Uh, so how, uh, like Shelly explained, I think how we can create our own risk profile. I think that's a very fair point. Uh, taking help from relationship managers, from financial experts, we should also do our own research. Uh, understand what, what our risks can be according to our age, capital requirement, capital future needs, everything. Individuals can choose a bond accordingly, depending on the tenure, dating, issuer type, and so on. Can we have the next slide, please? Market rumors. So uh, when we talk about market rumors, I think we learn about market through word of mouth or through other sources. Uh, so our suggestion would be to not here or you know go make decisions based on what people are saying or what is going on in the market and how people will react market sentiment sentiment is a very fragile um, uh, you know fragile aspect when we uh, talk about market rumors uh, you might hear a lot of people saying a lot of things which might color your judgment in the future by making an investment decision uh, it is very important to do your own research uh, like mentioned before uh, understand as much as you can from authentic sources on your own. Go go on go at your own pace. Take help from market experts. Learn from the, their experience, and then make an informed decision. Uh, this is a very important point. Point to not get carried away by some investment investments that might seem very interesting or uh, very tempting. For example, some very high yielding bonds. So we suggest our audience to not go for unseen or unheard returns. Some returns that we, you know we have never heard of or uh, we've never seen in the past. Investment good for one person might not turn out to be very good for you. So it is best to do your own due diligence and seek proper guidance before making any kind of financial investments. Not leveraging yourself. Uh, one more point, point to keep in mind is to not over leverage yourself while investing in bonds. Uh, do not borrow to invest with the mindset of only making profits, especially during uncertain conditions. It can lead to financial risks, so it is best to keep your risk capacity in mind before taking any financial decisions, whether it is bond or any other asset class. Liquidity of the bond, like we have discussed before, uh, not all bonds in the market are equally liquid. So if an investor decides to not hold a bond till maturity and chooses to invest uh, and chooses to invest some illiquid security, it can lead to financial distress for the investor. It might be difficult for the investor to sell back that particular bond that they invested in. So investing in liquid bonds is attractive, is a more lucrative uh, option that we can see if they want to uh, sell later. Yeah. Macro in, macroeconomic factors like Sherry also covered in the previous slide. Uh, it is very important to look at certain factors like 
interest rates, inflation, RBI policies, overall standing of the industry, uh, of the bond of the issuer that uh, the investors want to uh, invest in. Keeping yourself updated with relevant information is very, very beneficial. Unlisted bonds, when we talk about unlisted bonds, we are always suggesting our investors, uh, our public, to be very cautious. Uh, unlisted bonds come with their own inherent risk. And like lack of liquidity or inadequate information about the issuer, lack of price discovery, tedious implications, and most importantly, of course, lack of uh, SEBI oversight on these bonds. Off market, off market transactions. Off market transactions are basically transactions which are not reported through settlement platforms. The major risk associated with off market trades is counterparty risk. There is a possibility uh, of the counterparty not being able to meet its financial obligations or some mismatch in the mode of settlement that can happen. Um, so such transactions also actually come with a higher stamp duty and TCS. So while doing off-market transactions, you should be keeping all these points in mind. This is, I think, the last point. Yeah, this is, no. really, this is the most important point. Don't trade in bonds in violation to any SEBI guidelines and so And we will have one last poll to end this session here. Yeah. Ankita, can you conduct the next poll? Uh, so was this webinar helpful for you to start investing in the bond market? Yes, no, would like to get better information. Okay, so 63 percent of the people have said that the webinar was helpful. 65 now. Still, okay. Still counting. So 65 percent of the people thought that this webinar was helpful. We are very glad to be. Uh, look at this poll result. Next, I think in the end, we would like to take up Q&A session. Yeah. So we have many questions asked from our attendees here today. Uh, let's start, we'll pick up some of the questions. So the first question we'll pick up is from Leo D'Souza from Mumbai. And uh, Leo asks, how strong is credit rating agencies playing in Indian bond market? Yeah. So basically, rating agencies in India uh, are all regulated and governed by SEBI. Uh, the ratings assigned to the bond instrument, they play a very important role in assessing the credit worthiness of the uh, issuer. So uh, SEBI registered, some of the uh, credit rating agencies uh, which are registered by SEBI are uh, Crystal, ICRA, CARE, etc. So these rating agencies play a very crucial role uh, because um, you can. Uh, this is one of the important factor uh, on which you would decide uh, to make your investment in the bonds. So I think for every new investor, they mostly look at what credit rating a bond has and make the make a make a decision based on that. Yeah. Let's go on to the next question. 
So uh, this question is from uh, Mr. Chandran KP and he's from Calicut, Kerala. Uh, so uh, Mr. Chandran asks, what is the recommendation regarding the tenure of the bond? Uh, so the, the tenure of the bond is uh, basically uh, where you intend to invest. It depends, see what tenure you select depends totally upon the investment goals and your risk appetite. So uh, you can go in for different maturities. You can go in for the short term, medium term or the long term tenures uh, as per your objective, of, as per your goals. You want to invest for uh, what period of time you're looking for. How much uh, risk are you planning? Uh, risk are you okay to take? Uh, it to totally depends. The tenure of the bond will totally depend upon your uh, set goals uh, related to bonds. The next question will uh, is from uh, Navendu from Jaipur, and he asks how to evaluate a bond. Uh, Ishita, would you like to throw some light on this? Yeah, so like uh, we have mentioned also in our uh, previous slides, to examine a bond, you can firstly look at the credit rating that the bond has. It gives you an over, overall view of how the issuer has performed or it, does it have the capacity to repay the loan payments, interest payments on time. That is the foremost thing that you can see. Uh, apart from credit rating, you can also look at, you also look at, uh, you know, uh, do some background check, look at some of the financials of the company, how the company has performed in the past, what goals they have for the future, or uh, what, is, what, what does the management look like? All of these things to know how strong the company is and how uh, well they are placed to make the payments for your bond investments. Uh, Sushita, we take the next question. Uh, so the next question we'll pick up is from uh, Sumaj Jain from Delhi, uh, and he asks, "Please let me know how uh, how I can associate for selling bonds." So uh, basically, he wants to know how do you want to know how do you sell bonds? Uh, so to sell bonds that you are already holding, uh, what you can do is you can uh, go to your broker, and he will guide you exactly. Uh, he'll give you all the details about the settlement. You can speak to your relationship manager and have a complete understanding of how this works. Uh, to sell the bond, you would need a DIS, uh, which is a delivery instruction slip. DIS book is a delivery instruction slip book uh, to yeah. sell the bonds in the secondary market. So you need to ensure you have a DIS book before making uh, the sale. We'll take, the, uh, we'll take uh, one more question. This is from Mr. Venu Gopal Menon from Thane. And uh, he asks, why are bonds not as popular as fixed deposits? Uh, bonds, so when bonds? Uh, bonds and fixed deposits, they're both fixed income securities, uh, very similar to each other. Uh, the reason why people are still sticking to the traditional investment that is the fixed deposit is because there is a lack of understanding, lack of awareness about bonds, about how the whole process goes, about how the buying is done, how the selling is done, how is it reported, how is it settled, who take, keeps a check on it and everything. So uh, most people go for a bank FD because it's safe, it's very quick, it's very smooth. You just go to a bank, fill a form, get an FD open and everything. Uh, so that is the main reason I think we have seen that bonds are not as popular as FD, even though some of some bonds have a lot of bonds have higher returns than fixed deposits. In a sense, both both these fixed income products are very similar. Sushita, we go to the next question. Uh, so, Mr. Kameshwar Singh from Jamshedpur asks, I don't know about investment in bonds. I would like to know in details about bond investment. So, I think if uh, Mr. Kameshwar was attending the webinar, we have covered most of the points of how to invest in bonds and uh, basic terminologies and everything, how they can go about investing in the bond market. The next question. Uh, 
Uh, so, Mr. Ravi Mathur from Jaipur asks, uh, how do you find out whether a bond listed in secondary market has not defaulted or delayed any interest payments? Would you, would you like so, basically, they can go to uh, the NC website. And they can find out all the details about the bonds, all the bonds listed in secondary market. You'll have a complete uh, information about everything. Uh, they'll give you all the details. NSC, BSC, SEBI website. Yes, the These SEBI, the you can go to the, sources. yeah, you can go and check the uh, content on any of the authentic uh, websites. And you will get the complete detailed information about the bond. We take the next question. Is it safe to invest in corporate bonds? Yeah, uh, Mr. Ne uh, Ms. Yeah. Neelam uh, from Dehradun is asking if is it safe to invest in corporate bonds? Uh, so corporate bonds uh, are perfectly safe to invest in. Uh, they are not on the highest safety account. For example, uh, government securities and state development loans are the safest in the country today to invest. A lot of corporate bonds are also AAA rated, which are uh, more or less equally placed in terms of safety. So corporate bonds are uh, in a sense, they are uh, safe to invest. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll take another question from Mr. Dinesh Agarwal from Havra. And he's asking, how much is the risk involved while investing in bonds compared to other investing instruments? Is the principal amount safe while investing in corporate bonds? Yes. Yeah, so like we covered in the slides also, uh, the risk involved in, while investing in bonds depends on the type of the bond uh, that you're investing in. If it's a very high yielding bond, uh, the risk might be higher. Uh, if you want to go for safer, very safe instruments, government securities, SGLs, like I mentioned, AAA rated bonds are on the safe side. Uh, we take the next question from similar question. So a lot of questions so, that we yeah, see are, uh, yeah, are about credit rating and liquidity that we covered. So Mr. Uh, Rajesh asked if it is possible to sell the bonds before maturity. It is. It is possible to sell bonds before maturity. Uh, like I said, bonds are tradable securities in the uh, secondary market. And that is one of uh, the reasons how they are a little superior than FDs. Uh, bonds are tradable securities, so anybody who wants to sell their securities can do that in the secondary market. Now we take the next question. Uh, uh, Mr. H.S. Gaba asks, are bonds a good investment if one wants to invest for one or two years in comparison with a bank FD? Of course, I think uh, in comparison to bank FD, they do bonds do give higher returns. Uh, for when it comes to the tenure, which is one to two years, that also I think uh, we have a lot of uh, bonds in the market that uh, that are trading at uh, higher risk than FDs for one two years also. It's most of the AAA uh, reading bonds which are PS yeah, terms they can work for that too. We'll, we'll uh, pick up probably one last question because I guess we're running out of time now. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Ranjan is asking if bonds are liquid. Mr. Rajiv Ranjan from Patna. If bond has liquidity. Yes, I think like we mentioned, bonds do have liquidity. Uh, it totally depends on the issuer and uh, the type of security that they're investing in. If they, it's a AAA rated bond, then they are very liquid in the market. If they are government securities, then also they're very liquid. So it totally depends. There is a misconception, like I said, uh, about related to bonds, that bonds are very liquid assets and it becomes really hard to sell when they want to sell in the market later. Uh, that is... Uh, we won't deny that, but uh, there are a lot of papers that are traded regularly. So bonds are in uh, over overall uh, view is that bonds are liquid assets. Uh, I think with this, we can come uh, to an end of this webinar for today. Yeah, so we'll come to an end uh, for this webinar for now. Thank you everyone who uh, whoever has attended the webinar.